Hi, in this tutorial we will cover Spline Control, the new tool available in Lightwave 11.6. Yarnum made an incredible job on this tool. Uh, we really can, uh, can use it for different uh, tasks. We can animate tentacles, we can create IK splines, we can of course deform an object along a path. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, let, let's see how it works. So let's take a look at this animation. We have the scene loaded, and what you see, of course, is the OpenGL, the real-time OpenGL preview. And this animation has been created in a very simple way, just using the spline control. Let's see how spline control works. I will create a bond chain. Uh, we have several ways to create a bond chain. You, you can add uh, child bonds or we can even select the bonds I've added and use the split bond tool here okay to to get a, a chain now let's set up uh, this bond chain using spline control to do that I'm going to create uh, a node and we can call it spline control uh, uh, master okay and then we need other nodes that will define the curve so let's create them uh, let's go with something like this for the name okay what we need to do is to parent uh, the nodes that will define the curve to the spline control master so let's proceed cloning this nodes and moving them along the bone chain. Okay, four. Let's let's limit the number to four for, for now, but we can add more of them without problems. Okay, what we have to do now is to select all the bonds. We can use the right mouse button on the first bond to have the whole hierarchy selected. Then we press M. So we can assert the motion options, panel, and under spline control, we select the spline control master. So let's, now we can select any node we have created. And you can see now there is a ribbon representation of the curve, which is really useful because now we can move the nodes around and animate the bone chain, which is really useful. Of course, we can even rotate on the bank and get the twist. One very uh, cool option we have is that we can animate the first bone in the chain along the z-axis and get the whole chain travel along the curve. So this is really useful and is you know the the feature we will use to animate the shark. We have uh, other options of course uh, in spline control for example we can if we select all the bonds we can choose uh, the fetus spline option. That way the bonds will adapt, the, the, the bond chain will be adapted, length will be adapted to the one of the curve, which is great, especially if we select all the bonds and open the bone panel and transform and change the bone type to joint. So in this case, we have a different effect, of course. So let's try to animate the shark. We can load the shark one layer version. You can find this model in the content. And okay, so let's start with it. It will be really easy uh, because all we have to do 
is to add a bond chain to the shark. Let's position this one here and create a chain of bonds. So now you, you will see that after resting the bonds, we can already, of course, deform the shark. So let's undo this. Now I'm going to do something really important. We need to add uh, an extra bond here. Uh, I'll explain why. So for now, let's just clone this bond and rename it as a master bond. I'm going to change even the rest length. And let's go in from face wireframe. So you can better see the bonds. And of course the strength of this bond should be zero. It is very important that the coordinates, initial coordinates of this first bond, which will be controlled by the spline control, is zero. So now you see the, the position on Z is minus nine. Uh, so to solve this, I created the this little bond here. So what I'm going to do is to select the bond one and parent it to master bond. This way now, the initial coordinate of this on, on Z of this bond is zero. This will help um, while uh, setting up spine control. We do uh, else we will have we would have um, the mesh jumping in another position as soon as the spline control uh, is applied. So this solves the problem. Now we can finally create the spline control setup. So let's create our spline control master and let's position it at the start of the chain. Uh, you can snap pressing ALT, okay? If you press ALT and move and drag with the left mouse button, of course you can snap in place. Now we need, of course, to uh, create the nodes for the curve, so uh, we can call it node, maybe spline node, like this, and I would like to add an item shape, so let's do that. Box not too big, maybe something like this. Okay, I'm going to snap this as well. And of course I'm going to parent it to the spline control master. Since we want to animate the let's clone controls in the meanwhile. We want to animate the shark along a pretty long path. We need more controls. So we can really create a lot of them. Ten and eleven, twelve. 13, 14, let's do, I think it's enough, let's do 15 controls. Okay, now we have to select all the bonds in the chain, all but the first, of course, as you can see the master bond is not selected. Open the motion option panel and assign the spline control master as a spline control item. So, okay, now the shark will follow the deformation of the curve. Now we're ready to edit our path. Okay, we will do that at frame zero because we want it to be constant during the, the whole animation. So, 
let's create some kind of path for the shark. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's even do this. Okay, and this is the last. So what we have now. Wolf. Okay, it's a little too much, maybe. So, as we know, as we already we already seen in in the starting uh, part of the tutorial, we can animate the first bone. Let's go here and let's select the first bone. The first bone is bone one. It's not master bone. Just don't ever touch it. Okay, just use bone one to animate the shark. And okay, so let's go to frame to the last frame of the animation, and let's animate on Z. Okay. So now that's what we were getting. If I press play. Okay. Shark is traveling. The shark is traveling along the path. Super easy, but very effective. Let's make some changes to to the path. Uh, we can, of course, do something like this, but even like this. Raise this up and maybe moving like that. As you can see, the the shark is animated in real time. So we can see what what happens. Okay. Oh, I have animated the path, different keyframes, but that's not not a problem at all. I can simply go to the frame where I have animated the controls, select uh, all the controls and create a keyframe at zero and delete the one at 165. So now the path is constant, not animated. Even if being able to animate, the path can be useful in certain situations. Something we didn't do is to animate a bank, which can produce interesting results. So let's copy it zero again and let's delete the keyframe here. Very nice. Um, I want this to be more sweet. You can really tweak the animation in real time. You can see what, what happens here, and that's nice. That's so why we want this kind of rotation here. You can get it. Voila. Okay, so this is the result so far. Nice. Okay, now we should create a camera animation so we can follow the, the shark. So let's start at frame zero by something like this and of course we have to get far from him okay 
and again like this. Oh, let's see where it is. We can choose of staying really near him. Following him. Following the movements. I still don't like this too high. I do something like that. Okay. Still the camera. We can go down now. And we can go and go far, more far, and like this. And we can there we go, maybe out of the frame like that. So that's what we have now. Of course, we can further tweak the camera animation. For example, we can do something like this to keep it the, the shark in the frame. In this video, we will learn how to set up the spline controller manually and how to animate a shark along a path. But the spline control can be set up in several other ways, and we're going to describe them in some of the next videos. Thanks for watching.